So uh, we have the last question of this paper over here, question 7c. I think it's uh, one of the hardest questions in this paper. It reads, a wedge is cut out of an infinitely long circular cylinder of radius r by two planes. One plane mm. is perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder, and the other plane intersects the first plane at an angle of theta along a diameter of the cylinder. Find the volume of the wedge. So, okay, probably when you solve this question, right, you will have to draw a diagram, okay, uh, to visualize everything. Uh, and uh, another thing I need to tell you also is that uh, if you have the original question paper, uh, you will notice two differences. The first difference is that the term infinitely long does not appear in the original question paper. Uh, I just added it here as an additional clar clarification. And the second thing you'll notice is that uh, I wrote here the radius is r and the angle is theta, right? But uh, the original question paper has uh, radius 3 and theta equals to 60 degrees. So uh, I'm going to solve the question in terms of r and theta. You can just substitute the values back in to get the final answer of the question, okay? So uh, let's begin with diagrams. The first diagram I'm going to show you, right, is uh, the cylinder, of course, right? So we have uh, an infinitely long circular cylinder of radius r. So I've drawn the cylinder with the base at the at the x y plane, and then it just goes up infinitely along the z axis. Okay. Um, the center of the cylinder is going to be the origin. Okay. The center of the cylinder is the origin. And uh, since the cylinder goes up in the z direction, right, the axis of the cylinder is actually the z axis. Okay. Which also means, right, that this one plane is perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder. This particular plane is actually just going to be uh, this plane, the x y plane. Okay, that I've drawn here. So we cut the cylinder like that. Okay, the first cut is here. The second cut is going to be uh, intersecting the first plane at an angle of theta, right? Uh, along the diameter of the cylinder. So uh, along the diameter of the cylinder just means we we, we, we uh, slice along the origin uh, because my cylinder now is centered at the origin, right? So uh, angle of theta means we just take this plane, we rotate it by theta, and then we slice the, we slice the cylinder one more time. So one slice here, one slice here, which uh, gives us the wedge that I've shaded in red, okay, over here. This is what we're going to get if we slice here and here. And uh, I've drawn the wedge a little bit closer, okay, so that uh, later I will, lab I will labor on this diagram. And then uh, just uh, two things that you need to note, and hopefully you can visualize. If you look at the cylinder from the top right, this in this direction, you'll see a, you'll see a circle, right? Right, you'll see a circle, which also means that if you look at the wedge from the top right, if you look at the wedge from the top view, you will see a semicircle. The semicircle has a radius r, right, because the cylinder has radius r. And then if you look at the wedge from the side, right, so this direction, uh, if you look at the wedge from this direction, which, it, which also happens to be the y-axis, then you will see a triangle. So how do we uh, solve this question, right? Is uh, we are going to use a little trick and we are going to imagine this, okay? So we have the wedge here, right? The wedge is like that. And this is the y-axis. So if we start to slice the wedge, right? In the y direction, like that, like that, like that, like that, all right? We'll get like slight, we'll get a uh, little triangular slices, right? So if we slice at the blue area here, you get this blue triangle. If you slice at the red area here, you get a red triangle. But of course, the triangles are going to be uh, different areas, right? Because the, the you might slice at different parts of the wedge. The common thing between uh, these triangles, however, is that um, they have the same angle of elevation theta, right? Because uh, the, the planes that cut out the wedge were at an angle of theta. So, um, what does this mean, right? It means that if we slice the wedge thinly enough along the y direction, then every slice is just the area of the triangle times the thickness of the slice, right? Correct. Which means that, actually, if you remember the, the, the meaning of integration, right? The meaning of integration to get volume is just going to be the, the addition of all the areas times the uh, tiny... Uh, tiny differences in length, right? So if so, if we slice the wedge in the y direction, okay, and we know the area of the 
triangular cross sections. We just need to take the area. Okay, I'll call the area of the triangular cross sections a y. Okay, and then we multiply by all the little uh, slice lengths, right? That's d y, right? If we slice the wedge in units of d y, we multiply them together. This is the 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 tiny volume of each slice, right? And then we just add them all up along the y axis, right? We'll get and uh, the result will definitely be the volume of the wedge, right? Because we have sliced the wedge into little volumes, uh, and the little and the little volumes are area of the cross section times the length. Okay. Uh, the next thing we need to fill in is of course the the bottom and the top limits, right? So, uh, note that since we are slicing along the y that the y axis, right? The bottom is going to be here, and the top is going to be here, right? And uh, if you look from the top down view, the bottom is minus r. The top is uh, r, so we integrate from minus r to r. Okay, we integrate all the volumes from minus r to r, and then that's going to give us the uh, volume of the wedge. This is what we want to do. So as long as we can find the area of each triangle in terms of y, okay, of course, in terms of y, then uh, all we need to do is just integrate this thing, and then we are done. That's the volume of the wedge. Okay, if you can do it, I invite you to do it by yourself, and then uh, you can speed forward and check if your answer is correct. Otherwise, I will go through with you step by step on how to find uh, AY. So, uh, to find the area of the triangles, right, in terms of Y, okay, we just need to remember that uh, the area of any triangle, right, is just half times the base times the height, right? So the base of the base of the, the base of the triangle is this, right? That's called B of Y. The height of the triangle, that's called H of Y. Okay? Can I? So, first thing we, the first thing we need to note is that if you look at the base, right, the triangles that, that we slice out will have uh, the base lengths, right, all equal to points on the arc, right? So, the, 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 the points at which the foot of the perpendicular correct, intersects the bottom of the wedge they'll all be on the on this semicircle, right? If you slice, 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 slice this way, they'll all be on the semicircle. And this direction, right, is just the x it's just the x direction, right? Which means that the base correct of the triangle is just the x coordinate of wherever wherever the point happens to be on the semicircle. Uh. Which means that actually we can just find the equation of the semicircle. In terms of y, of course, and then that must be the base length of the triangles in terms of y, right? So okay, let's start. We know that uh, the equation of a the equation of a circle with radius r, right? Is x squared plus y squared equals to R squared, right? All right. This is the equation of uh, this this circle, right? This circle at the bottom, uh, okay. And then uh, if we rearrange the terms, we can get um, x squared equals to r squared um, minus y squared, right? Which also means that uh, if we take the square of both sides, this is x equals to plus minus square root of r squared minus y squared, okay. But then, right, this particular semicircle, right, has all positive x coordinates, right? You can see from here, the x coordinates are all positive, right? Correct. The but but then the other part of the circle has negative x coordinates. So actually, we can just write, um, the write that the the equation of the base of the wedge, right, here, is just the positive part, right? Because the negative part we ignore. Okay. So uh, hence the arc at the base of the wedge has equation x equals to square root of r square minus y square, right? We ignore the negative part as I said and uh, as a presentation note, I'll just write taking slices of the wedge 
parallel to the xz plane, okay, which is which is the y-axis as I said just now, right, will give us triangles. This is what I said just now too. And then uh, if we let the base and height of these triangles be b of y and h of y respectively okay then we have aha so uh remember that i said that the base length right the base length is just going to be the x coordinate of uh, the point in the semicircle right correct but the x coordinate of the semicircle here we already found it here right the x coordinate is going to be square root of r square minus y square right which means that b of y must be the x coordinate right which is square root of r square minus y square okay and um to find h of y right it's not very difficult because all we need is some uh, trigonometry you can you probably can see it already but i'll just explain so uh notice that tangent of theta right tangent of theta uh let me write that here tangent of theta is h of y divided by b of y right that's the definition of uh, tangent the opposite divided by the adjacent right which means that um h of y is going to be tangent theta of b of y right okay so you can just write down h of y is okay i'll just write b of y tangent theta All right okay So then now we have found the base of the we have found the base length of the triangle we have also found the height of the triangle both in terms of y right okay you know the area of the triangle so the area of the triangle is uh which is a of y is going to be just half times b of y times h of y right so uh the volume of the wedge is going to be uh, the integral from minus r to r. Uh, I just need to copy this here, right? Uh, a of y is half of base half uh, base times heights dy, right? And this we have found already to be b of y is uh, square root of r square minus y square, right? Correct. And then h of y is b of y tangent theta. b of y is this thing, so we just substitute everything in. Okay. This, uh, so yeah, just, just, just to note, right? This, this is h of y Oh no. And this is, uh, this here is b of y. Okay. So, I'm quite sure you can integrate this already. But in any case, uh, notice that half tangent theta is not in terms of y, right? So we can factorize it out. This is half tangent theta. And then uh, the square root of r square minus y square, we have two of these. So they just combine together. And then we integrate this uh, with respect to y, right? And then r is constant. r is constant with respect to y, right? So we can just integrate this as a half tangent theta um, times r square y minus y cube over 3 and then the top limit my top limit is r bottom limit is minus r we can integrate this and then uh, if you integrate this um oh sorry we integrated it already right so you just need to calculate it out uh substitute the r in r cube minus r cube over 3 then you substitute the minus r in you get um oh yeah it's uh, this minus the whatever you substitute the minus r in right so this is going to be uh, minus r minus r cube 
um, minus minus r cubed over 3 this is uh, going to be um, half tangent theta um, if you calculate this right this is going to collapse to give you 4 thirds r cubed okay and um, then we just need to multiply the half and the 4 thirds we get um, 2 thirds r cubed tangent theta and that's the answer okay that's the that's the volume of the that's the volume of the wedge here two thirds r cubed tangent theta uh so as a note right as a note right uh if you have the original version of the question paper right r is three theta is 60 right so the answer should be two thirds three cubed tangent 60 right so tangent 60 is a uh, square root three so three cubed is 27 2 thirds times 27 times square root 3. Uh, this will be 18 square root 3. So this is the this is the answer that you should get if you have the original uh, question paper. Okay. So uh, as I promised, right, I will explain to you why I uh, wrote infinitely long here. Okay. And that is because um, if we do not assume the cylinder to be infinitely long, right, it's possible that the cylinder might be too short. And then we slice like we slice uh we we slice the the cylinder up to to a different to a wedge with a different cross sectional area than a triangle. Okay, so uh if you imagine if you imagine the cylinder as like a super super short cylinder, right? Right, something like that. Right, the first plane we cut here, right? And then if the second plane uh were were to be like, let's use the question papers uh number. If it were to be sixty degrees and then it was too steep, right? What we'll get is uh, we'll, you will cut the cylinder in a wedge of the shape of, of a shape of a trapezium and not a triangle, right? Correct. If the cylinder was too short, like if it didn't extend fully, and then it ended here, you will get a trapezium and not a triangle. Okay. So, uh, to ensure that the 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 slices of the wedge are actually triangles, right? We need to assume that the cylinder is infinitely long, which is not mentioned in the original question paper, but um, I presume that's what they wanted to you to do. So I just assume that it's infinitely long. You can also work out uh, work this out for the case where the cylinder is uh, of finite length, and then you cut to get a trapezium. I'm sure you can apply the same method, but uh, it's a little bit more complex, and I don't think that's what the point of the question was. So, yep, that's the solution for this question.